Hello and welcome to this video about using Copilot in OneNote. Today I'm going to give you some pros and cons for using Copilot in OneNote and I'll give you some concrete examples about what Copilot can do for you in OneNote. So stay with me. Well, hi everyone, this is Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And today, to help me live a more simplified life, I am going to do a little bit of exploring about Copilot. Now, if you've not heard of Copilot, it is the AI or artificial intelligence uh, generation component uh, that is built into the Microsoft 365 line of products, may not be available on everything yet, just showed up on my uh, version of OneNote and I want to give it a try and let you guys know what I think. Okay. So I ask uh, Copilot to give me some pros and cons for using Copilot in OneNote. And this is what it came up with. Here we go. First, let's talk about the pros of using Copilot in OneNote. Copilot is an AI assistant that can help you improve your productivity and enrich your experience within the OneNote application. Copilot can assist you in finding information answering questions, and even performing specific commands within OneNote. This can save you time and effort, allowing you to focus on more important tasks. However, there are some cons to using Copilot in OneNote. Copilot is an AI-powered assistant, and as such, it may not always provide the most accurate or relevant information. Additionally, Copilot may not always understand the context or the intent behind your questions or commands, which can lead to confusion or frustration. All right, so that's what Copilot has to say about using Copilot in uh, OneNote, which I think is pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, let's get rid of that. And what I want to do is I want to give you some concrete examples from my life, my notebook, uh, the way that I do things here at A Crystal Clear Life, uh, so that you can have a better idea of what Copilot might do for you uh, in OneNote, okay? All right, so let's get started. I have a blank uh, page up here, and you will see up here in this corner right here, the little Copilot icon uh, has appeared on my uh, Microsoft 365 version of OneNote, okay? It will also appear as I right-click things, uh, so you can see it appears here. Copilot will come up with a drop-down menu that says Summarize, To Do, or Rewrite. We'll talk about those in just a minute. But for now, I want to focus on this Copilot uh, button that is up here on the Home or Ribbon menu. So when I click on that, I get this... Um, list uh, down here on the side, this co-pilot list on the side, and uh, it gives me a space to start writing a question in here. And it will say, tell me specifically what you want to do. For ideas, select the prompt guide below. So when you look down here at the bottom, there are view prompts, and I'll show you those real quick. Uh, viewing prompts, it will let you create something, it will help you to understand something, it can edit something for you, or you can ask a question, all right? Let's go to create, all right? And it gives you some suggestions, give me ideas for ways to improve my productivity, help me plan my career growth, help me plan for a team's offsite, you know, all of those kinds of things. Um, let's see, I'm gonna come up with my own particular prompt, uh, that I'd like to share with you, okay? Let's do this. Uh, graduation season is coming up. Uh, let's go ahead and create a prompt that says, uh, let's see, draft a plan for a graduation party for Nick 
including food and decorations. Also include a shopping list for needed items. Okay. All right. So very basic, simple. I'm asking them to create a party plan uh, for a graduation party. All right. So you can see here, I'm very being very specific in my question. I'm asking them to draft a plan for a graduation party for a specific person, include food, include decorations, and uh, give me a shopping list of everything that I need. So it, all I have to do is cut and paste. Okay. Once I have this written in the prompt area, all I have to do is hit send and let's see what it gives us back. And it goes through a number of these working on it, finishing up. Now it's not just necessarily looking in my OneNote. It may be looking out on the web as well. Um, but we'll see what it comes up with. Okay. So it's giving me some information, but it's still working. And there's the shopping list. Okay. Now, uh, if you look back up here, you can see everything comes up in this little menu right here. All right. I find that hard to read. So I'm going to hit the copy button and I'm going to come over here to my blank page that I started for Copilot in OneNote. And I'm going to paste that information right here so that it is a little bit easier for us to see. Okay. All right. So what it does is it gives you, uh, in this response, it isn't based on the current section, meaning it's gone somewhere else to find this information. Here is a plan for Nick's graduation party, including food, decorations, and shopping lists for items. So you see here, there's some uh, suggestions for appetizers, main courses, uh, for a graduation party, barbecue chicken, burgers, hot dogs, veggie skewers, uh, side dishes, and desserts, cupcakes, fruit salad, ice cream. You know, looks like a pretty good menu to me. Decorations, balloon in the school colors. That's good. Graduation banners and signs, tablecloths. You see they're very generic things, right? Uh, a photo booth with graduation themed props. That's pretty fun. And then there is a shopping list that it created for me down here. Uh, veggie platter ingredients. So uh, you see all of the, you know, the cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, ranch dressing. That sounds good. Cheese and crackers. Yep. You know, when you take a look at this, not, not bad, uh, not a bad shopping list. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could do all of these and I could go up and add a tag to them that says, uh, to buy right there. And now I already have a shopping list. I can delete things if I want. I can rearrange them, whatever. But I think overall, that's not a bad uh, uh, response to that particular prompt. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go try another one. Uh, let's see. Let's say something that's a little bit more. Um, well, wait a minute. Before I do that, uh, it would like some feedback. Um, it would like to know if it was good feedback or bad feedback. I think it was pretty good feedback, but you can also chat with Copilot. So in some cases it will ask you questions. Uh, what are some graduation party themes? Maybe that's something that I want to know. Uh, what are some graduation party games? Maybe I want to play games at the, at the party. If I click that, it will then further our discussion, uh, about some graduation party games. Okay. And again, it's given me a bunch of information. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to bring it down over here and I am simply going to paste it, uh, into this little graduation thing that I'm creating for Nick. 
All right. So this response isn't based on the current section, meaning it's not looking at this one note stuff that I already hit, have here. But here are some graduation party games that can be played. And it lists five different ideas for graduation games. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's pretty good information too. So again, I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. Which leads me to say, uh, if you are liking any of this content today, uh, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, uh, subscribe if you have not already, and hit that notification bell, turn it all the way on so that you don't miss any of our future videos. We post videos every Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, and they are usually related to me keeping my life organized using OneNote. All right, now back to Copilot. Okay, I can go down here now and simply change ideas. We're going to change um, directions all together, okay? You know one of the things that I love in OneNote is uh, the use of tables, okay? Can Copilot create tables for me? Well, let's see. All right, so I'm going to create a prompt um, related to a table, and <laughs> I have a project that I'm working on, and what I'd like to know is for every day of the month, I'm going to give myself a start time and a stop time. And then I want to be able to track, you know, how much time I'm actually spending on this one particular project. Okay. All right. So let me get that prompt in there. All right. So here's my prompt. Create a table listing each day of the month for May in one column. And in the other columns, therefore, recording start time, stop time and total hours worked. Okay. Let's see what it comes up with. While it's waiting, I'm going to click uh, outside of my box over here if I can and start a new area for me to put this information. All right. And again, you can see it coming up in this little side box over here. Again, that's more difficult for me to read, so I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it over here. And you see this response isn't based on the current section, meaning it's going outside of the page that I'm working on. And it has given me a table. Uh, the titles are bolded. I like that. Uh, there's a little bit of shading there to differentiate them. I like that. I do have every day of the month for May. And I also have my start time, my stop time and my total hours worked. Okay. Now, remember this is a table in OneNote, so it cannot do that calculation for me, uh, but it is something that I could do myself or I could convert this table into an Excel spreadsheet if I want to. Okay. All right. I think that's a great table. Now think about the practical uses for this for yourself. Maybe you're somebody who wants to start tracking your blood pressure. So you create a table that simply can allow you to track your blood pressure and any notes about why you feel like your blood pressure may be going up or down. I don't know. Um, all right. But I think that's a pretty good response. I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. One of the things that I do every week is I sit down and do a meal plan. Now, sometimes I get so tired of trying to come up with ideas of things to eat. Let's see if Copilot can help me with that. So I have written here list 10 healthy meals for weeknight dinners. Okay. Now I'm being specific. How many do I want? 10. What kind of meals? Healthy meals. Okay. Um, and weeknight dinners kind of gives it uh, a time frame of, you know, it should take a half an hour to 45 minutes to cook, not something that's going to take all day long. Could I change this to crock pot meals? Probably. Uh, let's see what it gives us with weeknight meals. Uh, and then we will, um, you know, maybe try crock pot. So let's see. Send. And it really doesn't take that long for it to generate these ideas. So we're going to copy that again, bring it back down here. I'm just going to keep adding to this and make it one long section here. Again, this response isn't based on the current section, but here are 10 healthy meals for weeknight dinners. Grilled chicken with roasted vegetables, 
salmon and quinoa with steamed broccoli, sounds healthy, turkey chili with a side salad, whole wheat pasta and marinara sauce with roasted vegetables, stir fry with tofu, brown rice, and mixed vegetables, fajita bowl with brown rice, black beans, grilled peppers, and onions. All right, I think this is pretty good. Again, I'm gonna give that one a thumbs up. I think that is uh, you know, a good list of meals. Let's try it with crock pot meals and see what it says. Okay, so I've taken that same uh, prompt that I just put in, list 10 healthy meals for weeknight dinners, but I've added the words crock pot in there, okay? So I want uh, 10 healthy crock pot meals uh, for weeknight dinners. Let's see what it comes up with. Sometimes uh, it's helpful to modify, you know, keep track of and modify uh, your um, responses or your questions so that you can refine the answer to get exactly what you're looking for. All right, and again, I will copy those, bring them back here, paste them in. Uh, here are 10 healthy crock pot meals, slow cooker chicken and vegetable soup, crock pot turkey chili, uh, slow cooker vegetable curry, crock pot beef and broccoli. I think all of that is great. Now, let's say, uh, let's pick one of these. Um, slow cooker vegetable curry. I'm going to select that. I'm going to say copy and Yeah, I'm going to go over here and say, uh, give me, giver, give me a recipe for, and I'm going to put that uh, slow cooker vegetable curry in there with recipe for six people with a shopping list of ingredients. All right, so now I've gotten my recipe, I've gotten my list of foods. Now I'm gonna go see if it will find a recipe for me. I do not have a recipe for slow cooker vegetable curry anywhere in my OneNote notebook all 57,000 OneNote notebooks that I have. So the recipe that it comes up with will have to be something uh, from outside uh, because I do not have uh, that in my, uh, in my current uh, notebooks. Let's see what it came up with. All right, so here are the ingredients. Large onion, gloves, car, uh, let's see, did I miss something? It looks like, did I hit? It looks like I hit the wrong button. It's not giving me the complete information. Let's try that one more time. Let's do the dictate button and I wanna show you that, the microphone, okay? Give me a recipe for slow cooker vegetable curry. So you see, you can use that voice command as well, which is very helpful. Then it doesn't look like you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> ah, okay. So there is a message here that says, unfortunately, the document does not provide the complete recipe you may want to search for the recipe online. All right, so it's having trouble with that one, uh, that one in particular. So let's see, let's try a different one. I'll do this one. Give me a recipe for slow cooker turkey and vegetable meatloaf.
So this may be one of the cons where you don't get the complete recipe and uh, you know there may be a little bit of frustration if it's not 100% accurate. But what in life is perfect, okay? All right, let's see what this one says. Let's go down here. Ah, now this looks more like a recipe, okay? For slow cooker turkey and vegetable meatloaf. There are all of my ingredients, and here are all of my instructions uh, at what temperature to cook it for, for how long, and let it rest before serving, okay? So that looks like a complete recipe. That looks pretty good, okay? So I'm gonna give that one a thumbs up. I'm gonna go back up here. All of your um, uh, queries that you do uh, stay in this little section. So I'm gonna go back up here and I am going to give this one a thumbs down uh, because I didn't feel that was a very good response. And this one also a thumbs down because I didn't feel like that was a very good response. Okay. All right. Now I do have a lot of information um, about the uh, topic of getting things done. Uh, that's the book that was written by David Allen. I have lots and lots of videos on the GTD or getting things done method. I will link them up above if you are interested. Um, but I want to see what Copilot knows about getting things done and see if they are as much of an expert as I think that I am. All right, let's do that. Okay, so switching modes again here. Uh, I have summarized the book, Getting Things Done by David Allen, and generate a table with the key points from each chapter, including practical examples, and also add 10 discussion questions about the book. Now, this is a pretty specific request, and it is a large request, I think. Uh, let's see how it does with this one. I don't know. I like that little copy button. It is much faster than having to, you know, highlight everything and then copy it. Okay, I'm gonna have to make this a little bit smaller so we can see. All right, so here we go. Getting things done, GTD is a time management method developed by David Allen. The book describes a framework for organizing and tracking tasks and projects with the aim of reducing stress and increasing productivity. The GTD method involves capturing all tasks and ideas in a trusted system. Boy, have we heard that before. Clarifying their meaning and importance, organizing them into actionable steps, reviewing them regularly, and engaging with them in a focused and effective manner. Some key points from the book include the importance of capturing all tasks and ideas, the two minute rule for quickly completing small tasks, and the use of context-based lists for organizing tasks and the importance of regular reviews. Wow, I would say that is an excellent summary of GTD. And then they go through the book and here are the five chapters with the key points, okay? Uh, and then practical examples. Um, yeah, I think that looks really, really good. My goodness gracious. Uh, now, moving on to the uh, discussion questions. Uh, how does it help reduce stress and increase productivity? What are the five stages? Uh, how, how can context-based lists be useful to organize tasks? All of those are fantastic questions. I would give that a huge thumbs up. I think that is a great um, use of um, Copilot here in OneNote to go out, collect that information, bring it back, summarize it, make a table, give me examples, give me discussion questions to use all in what? It took a minute and a half to do that. Okay. I think that's pretty good. I like that a lot. All right. Now, uh, I want to see if it can do something with the stuff that I have in OneNote. So you know that here in my uh, projects, I have all kinds of things that I have worked on throughout the year, all right? I am going to ask it to uh, 
Tell me what have I accomplished? What have I accomplished? What projects have I finished? Okay. All right. So here's the prompt I'm going to try for my projects section. In this section, meaning projects, uh, look at my completed projects and summarize my top achievements. Okay. All right. Let's see what it does. All right, let's copy this and I'm going to create a new page so that you guys can see this a little bit more cleanly uh, and I'll paste it here. And here are my projects that I uh, was able to work on. So according to the current section, meaning this project section, here is a summary of your top achievements uh, from your completed projects. And it tells me <laughs> a lot of projects. Uh, that I did, maybe who they were for and specifically when I did them. So for example, I finished Sarah's quilt in June of 2023 and presented it to her at her graduation party where she loved it. And I paid at a secretary desk in August of 2023. Uh, I organized a homecoming 150 event in September of 2023. I created a budget binder in 2023 and in January of 20, in January of 2023, I created a Las Vegas trip calendar. Uh, I set up the pool. I got the house ready for Brad's visit in September. <laughs> I came up with ideas for things to do while Brad was visiting. I moved the greenhouse. I put the pool away. That looks like a pretty good list of accomplishments. Now, think about this in the business world. Let's say, you know, you have a list of, or you have a section for all of your um, meetings that you have one-to-one -one meetings with your supervisor. And that's where you talk about things that you've achieved and things that uh, they want you to work on. Doing something like this, having all of your wins in one place, that's a pretty great, uh, great thing, I think. Uh, I think this has a lot of implications for the business world as well as your personal life. Pretty interesting. All right, I'm going to give this one. Oh, wait, it says a reference. Ah, okay. So you see here, it actually gives us a reference. And it says that it went to the completed 2023 uh in this section, I guess it's a page, page link. It will not let me open that page when I click on it. It says, um, we can't open files from other pages. Please open a OneNote file. That actually happens to be a OneNote file. So maybe that's a bug. I don't know, but it looks like it looked at my completed 2023 list and came up with this list of things that I have completed. Okay. So I think that's pretty interesting. All right. Well, I want to give you some prompt tips. If you want to start using Copilot in OneNote, uh, I think one of the very first uh, tips that I would say is use specific positive instructions like uh, you know, create a table including X, Y, Z, you know, be very specific and, um, you know, positive meaning not negative things. Like don't say don't include such and such or don't include, uh, you know, the dates or something like that. It wants positive things to include, not negative things not to include. Okay. Um, tip number two would be to make sure that you give it some context. Okay. Um, maybe setting the tone for how you want uh, the piece to sound. Maybe you're writing an email or maybe you're writing a report summary and you want it to sound professional or you want it to sound warm and friendly. Um, so those kinds of things are, are helpful as well. Um, when you were writing your response, try to use guide words like we did when we asked for the recipes. I said I wanted healthy recipes. I wanted them for the weeknights. That really helps guide the response. So you know, it's not just giving me pizza and dino nuggets and, you know, that kind of thing. Revise the prompts as you go. So if you're not really getting what you're looking for, it's okay to revise, add uh, other words, change words around. For example, we went back and modified to add the word crockpot uh, so that we had some crockpot healthy meals. 
Uh, so that's a good thing to remember as well. Okay. And always, always, always review and verify just because AI goes out and looks for something. It is using information that is put out there in the world. And when you started with computers as long ago as I did, there was an old saying that was garbage in garbage out. Okay. So if people are putting out garbage out there in the world, that may be what you get back if you do an AI generated search for something. Okay. So always review what you are looking at and verify that that information is in fact correct. Okay. Basically, I think Copilot gives you a good starting point for things that you might want to create or generate uh, in OneNote. I wouldn't say it's the end all and be all, but it certainly does give you a good start. For example, that list of healthy dinnertime meals and then that list of healthy crock pot dinnertime meals, that certainly is a good place to start. Now I can go through and just like we did together, I can collect a new recipe that I think might be interesting. I can certainly delete things that I know that my family is not going to eat. Okay. So a good starting point, but not the end all and be all. Well, as I said earlier, all Copilot in OneNote features are available to customers with a Copilot from Microsoft 365 license or the Copilot Pro license. Now, however, they are currently only available in the Microsoft uh, 365 that is available on Windows. So they are not available on Mac yet. Um, okay. So you'll have to wait for that. Well, I really think that Copilot for OneNote is an interesting thing to take a look at. Um, it certainly can help you uh, be more creative, generate some ideas, at least give you a little nudge to get you started uh, in the right direction. We didn't even look at things uh, that Copilot can do, like summarizing a bunch of information that you might have, rewriting a bunch of information that you might have, um, you know, organizing things in a different way, you know, taking a bunch of bullet items maybe and turning those into a table. So that may be some other videos that we come up with. If you are interested in Copilot and you'd like to see a little bit more about what it does, leave me a comment below. Uh, I'm going to continue to experiment with it and uh, collect some ideas for things that it will do. Um, and, you know, uh, let's go on this journey together. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Uh, I hope you learned something new. Give me a like if you did. And until next time, here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I use OneNote and Copilot is by my side. <laughs> until next time. Okay. Bye.